So we're building a simple oscillator from the book called Handmade, Handmade Music by Nicholas Collins. And we're using a, uh, we're using the Schmidt trigger uh, for the, for the oscillator and the the Schmidt trigger actually has six individual uh, circuits um, called inverters so we're only using one part of the Schmidt trigger we're only using one inverter uh, there are six others so the first the first pin is the input of the inverter and the second pin is the output of the inverter. A 100 uh, kilo ohm uh, potentiometer connects from pin one to pin two. Now, pots or potentiometers have three pins and they're numbered one two and three so uh in the book he he assigns letters to the pins a b and c but it's the same same concept and the center pin that's called the wiper and uh that's important because that's the part that moves when you turn, when you turn the knob. The wiper is moving. It's moving across a wafer, a circular wafer that was um, printed with a resistive compound. And so when you turn the wiper, the resistance either increases or decreases depending on where we are where the wiper is on that wafer but uh, there's more to it and there's plenty of information on the internet if you want to learn about how a potentiometer works but for this case we're just going to wire a potentiometer as a variable resistor we solder one wire to pin to the wiper and we solder another wire to the other side of the pot you could actually use either side it, you could wire this wire to three or you could wire it to one and that that would just change the orientation of the uh of how the uh, pot works. Instead of going higher one way, it would go lower. It would be opposite if you, if you swap these pins. Okay, so it's wired as a variable resistor. And the wiper, which is yellow here, let's see if we can see that. Okay, yellow wire is the center pin, which is the wiper. That goes into, that goes into pin number one of the Schmidt trigger. And the other side of the pot, either pin three or pin one, is goes into pin number two of the Schmidt trigger chip. And pin number two is the output of the hex inverter. You don't really need to know that. All this stuff is covered, is actually covered in this book, or you can look it up online. But just know that the uh, potentiometers wire it up so that the wiper connects to pin one of the Schmidt trigger, and the other pin, either pin three or pin one, is wired to pin two of the Schmidt trigger. A standard audio output jack is wired so that 
the tip, the tip of the jack, we, f we refer to this as the tip because the, that's where it connects, connects to the tip of the jack, which is uh, this, this tab of the uh, output jack. And in my circuit, the wire is green. Uh, no, sorry, the tip is blue. Okay, here we go. The tip is wired blue. So the tip of the jack gets wired to pin two of the Schmidt trigger. So now you have two wires in pin two of the Schmidt trigger. You have the uh, one wire of the potentiometer and one wire of the output jack. The tip or the hot, the signal part of the output jack. And the ground is referred to as the sleeve. So that's, that's this part here actually that comes up from the jack that has threads on it. That's connected to ground. So ground is blue on the breadboard. And of course, hot is red. So we have, we have the ground of the jack going to the ground of the breadboard. And we have the hot or the tip of the jack going to pin two of the Schmidt trigger. So that's the jack in the pot. And uh, we have a capacitor. I like using, to start with, I like using a, uh, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. That goes from pin one of the chip to ground. One leg goes to pin one of the uh, Schmidt trigger chip and the other leg of the capacitor goes to ground. And we also have to hook up the Schmidt trigger needs power, needs to be hooked up to power and ground. So pin 14 of the Schmidt trigger is the power. So I ran a little jumper wire from pin 14 to the power bus of the breadboard. And pin seven, of the Schmidt trigger chip gets wired with a jumper wire to ground. And if you've never used a uh, breadboard before, um, all of these all of these holes here, the uh, the vertical hole, all the vertical holes are connected. So this hole. This hole here is connected to this, to this, to this, to this. And those are just for connecting your components. These are all connected and these are all connected in a vertical way. But this, this group here isn't connected to this. It's separated by this little valley here. And the holes going horizontally are not connected at all. So if you wanted to connect this a component that was here to a component that was over here at 50, you would need a jumper wire to connect those two areas like that. So Let's just take the, uh, the chip as an example. This is pin seven of the chip. All of these little holes are connected. So I could have put the, I could have put this ground wire here, 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 or here, and it wouldn't have mattered. The same, so that's all the vertical holes. Uh, the same with the, the same with the, the hot, uh, the jack hot wire, the tip. I could have put it here or down here, the one, the hole below, and it wouldn't have mattered because all these holes are connected in a vertical way. 
So uh, that's that's the basics of a uh, of a breadboard. Just know that all these all these holes are connected. There's a separation here, so but all these holes are connected in a vertical way. But moving horizontally, nothing is connected. You would have to use jumper wires, or your components would go across those uh, those holes. And so that's that's how this um, that's how this chip is wired up. Right now, we're only using one inverter section of the chip. And to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here's a diagram from the book of the chip, the Schmidt, uh, the Schmidt trigger, Schmidt hex inverter. So uh, this is this is the part we're using. Here's one inverter. Here's another. Here's another, and they're all separate. So you could use each inverter as a separate oscillator. Right now we're just using this inverter with, with its input and its output pins. Pins one and two. One is the input, two is the output. And let's see what else are we talk about. Yeah so uh as I mentioned in part one, we're using the Hex Schmidt trigger. Uh, that's the 74C14, but you could also use the CD4584 or the CD4106. And you'll get the same, uh, you'll get the same results. He does talk about, well, there are some other chips, other variations of that chip. Uh, one is the 74HC14, and that won't work uh, as as this does. Uh, that is a um, that chip is a uh, is a five volt powered chip, and uh, I'm not sure what what the other differences are, but it won't work. Uh, it may work if you change uh, certain things with the circuit, especially the, the power supply, because right now the power supply is nine volts, and uh, you you would, I think you would ruin that chip if you used it with nine volts. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, we're using the uh, the seventy four C fourteen, which is easier to use. And I'm going to demonstrate, I just wanted to show the basics of how to use a breadboard and the basics of using the uh, Hex Schmidt trigger chip and uh, how it's basically wired. Uh, I guess that's it for, for this video. And the next video I'm going to hook up, we're going to experiment and hook up a photo cell, a photo cell sensor, and see how that changes the uh, frequency to give people a, uh, well, for people who are just viewing this, this, um, this video, uh, who haven't viewed the last video, I'm going to turn on the amplifier and we're going to see uh, what this sounds like. Okay, just got to hook up the uh, ground wire. to hook up photo cell sensor, a photoresistor.